The pandemic has made it difficult for many families to put food on the table. To combat growing food insecurity, lawmakers want to expand accessibility for national programs that help low-income families. Today, the Assembly of Agriculture and Food Insecurity Committee met to consider 10 bills addressing school meals, SNAP benefits, and more. Melissa Rose Cooper reports as part of our ongoing series, Hunger in New Jersey, that focuses on food insecurity and its impact here in the Garden State. Imagine being a student, sitting there in class, hungry because you haven't had any breakfast, not having the ability to have lunch, and probably figuring there's nothing there when you get home for dinner, right? So uh, it prevents them from being as successful as they possibly can. It's one of the reasons why Assembly Speaker Craig Coughlin is working hard to pass new legislation to fight food insecurity in New Jersey. Coughlin is sponsoring a bill known as the Working Class Families Anti-Hunger Act, which would expand access to free meals in schools. Back in 2019, uh, we, re we went from uh, reduced lunch and, uh, and uh, breakfast programs to free lunch and breakfast programs. That helped about over 500,000 students in the state of New Jersey. And what we're doing here is to try to capture uh, even more students by raising the percentage under which you can, can receive the benefits. So the current standard is 185% uh, of uh, federal poverty level. This will raise it to 200% and capture another 26 or uh, 27,000 students throughout the state of New Jersey. The act is part of a 10 bill legislative package being reviewed in Trenton right now all aimed at addressing food insecurity, an issue advocates say is especially important with the state's cost of living being so high. It's 60 some odd thousand for a family of four, and everybody knows that at that income level in New Jersey, it's tough to afford, you know, to pay full price for a school meal. Adele LaTourette is the director of Hunger for New Jersey. She's hopeful the legislative package will be a first step in resolving a number of issues connected to food insecurity. We need to look at the fact that, you know, K to 12 students receive meals, have the option of free paid or reduced. Those kids don't automatically, um, they're not automatically not hungry when they go into the college. So we really need to address that. SNAP is the frontline defense against hunger. We need to beef that program up. We have seen maximization of SNAP benefits during the pandemic. And what that meant was that for the first time, people were actually able to get through the month with SNAP benefits. That's what we need to see to really address the issue of hunger. Um, and then of course, we have living wage issues and housing issues. Assemblywoman Verlina Reynolds Jackson is hoping to address some of those struggles. She's sponsoring a bill included in the legislative package that gets rid of the work requirements needed to receive SNAP benefits, which she believes keeps some people from applying. They're more likely to be successful and going through their own independent, looking for their own careers, going for their own job training. And it's not like the one stops and the workforce developments aren't there to support them in their search. This is just removing the requirement again to, to kind of put you in that box to say you must follow X, Y, and Z. I think, you know, we have to keep this in context um, in, in terms of where we are and where the need is right now. There have been a tremendous amount of waivers uh, and options that the state aggressively took uh, that became available from the feds uh, from the pandemic. Those are starting to sunset. Many of them have sunsetted already. I think this um, legislative package looks to meet those changes uh, in a way that will hopefully uh, uh, help folks with the lessen the shock of folks who may not become eligible or may be looking for something else because they're not quite on their feet. A vote is expected to take place on the legislative package later this month. For NJ Spotlight News, I'm Melissa Rose Cooper. Funding for Hunger in New Jersey has been provided by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, working with others to build a national culture of health that provides everyone in America a fair and just opportunity for health and well-being.